this is Lisa from CoochieCoochieCoo.com and today I'm going to show you how to sew a very simple pair of pajama pants from woven fabric. Let's get started. To sew your pajama pants you'll need woven fabric, a sewing pattern. My last tutorial showed you how to draft your own pants pattern, but you can also use a regular pattern. I have a great one in my shop, which is the Evening Primrose Pajama Pants Pattern. An iron and an ironing board. I also like using one of these sleeve ironing boards for doing the hem. Elastic for your waistband. I'm using two centimeter, but you can also use two and a half centimeter. It depends on what your pattern calls for. Fabric shears, straight pins, thread to match your fabric, size 90 sewing needles. A ruler of some sort. I like to use this sewing gauge to help me do my hems and waistband. And a safety pin to get your elastic through the waistband. Let's get started. In my last video I showed you how to draft your own pants pattern from a pair of pants that fit you. So I'm going to be using this pattern. However, if you want more options, head to my shop. I'll put the link below and you can get my Evening Primrose Pajama Pants Pattern for women. It has a bunch of different sizes and all sorts of options, such as optional pockets. Um, you can do a drawstring waistband if you prefer that to elastic. And there are three different lengths. There's full length, three quarter, and shorts length. If you're doing that, just measure yourself and use the guide to um, figure out which size you should be. You can either cut out directly on the piece or if you wanna save your pattern, you can just put tracing paper over it and trace over the size you want and cut it out. Before you cut your fabric, you're going to wanna to check if you have a directional print on it. So take these strawberries. Notice that they're all going in the same direction. The tops are over here and the bottoms go down here. So when you cut out your pattern, if you're using a fabric like this, you're going to wanna to make sure that you place your pattern like this on it so that the tops of the strawberries are at the top of the pattern piece and the bottoms point down towards the bottom. So when you cut out your pattern with a um, directional print like this, you're going to need to make sure that you're going in the correct direction. If you cut it out in the other way, like this, you, you will find the when you um, cut out the fabric, you'll see that your strawberries are upside down because the tops are at the bottom and the, the bottoms are at the top. So you wanna make sure to avoid this mistake. If this is your first garment that you're sewing, I really suggest that you use a solid color fabric because that'll just make it a whole lot easier to cut out and also to sew together. What I'm using here is actually just an old cotton bed sheet and I love using sheets for things like pajama pants, but other things as well, because you get a lot of fabric and they're super cheap, especially if you go to a thrift shop and you can get them. So notice you can put your, um, your pattern piece like this and it looks fine. Or you can put it like this and it looks fine. Or seeing as you have woven fabric, you can actually do it in this other direction too. However, the fabric will, um, you can make the best use of your fabric with your pattern pieces. This part is difficult for me to show you on the video because the sheet is so big. But what you need to do next is take your fabric, whatever fabric you're using, even if it's not a sheet, and iron it really well so it's nice and flat. Try and get out the wrinkles as best as possible. Then fold it in half. Um, it doesn't really matter if it's right sides facing or wrong sides facing, but I like to do right sides facing just in case I need to make any marks. That way I don't mark up the right side. So then put the edges together, fold it in half, and I like to pin it to just hold it all together while I'm putting the pattern pieces on. Okay, so I have my fabric all laid out. You can't see the whole piece because it's just too big. Here you can see there's the edge um, where I've folded it in half. Now, if you have a directional fabric, you must put your pieces side by side. So one piece and, and two, whoops, two pieces like this because that way the fab the print will be in the same direction as both if you have a solid color like this however you can make the better use of your fabric so notice here this whole piece would be wasted which is a shame so what you can do if you have solid fabric is actually change the direction like that so this way i'm wasting a whole lot less fabric. Um, you can't really see it's off camera, but um, like that. Also another thing you can do in this case, because we're cutting out two pieces 
of each of these. That's why we have our fabric put back um, folded in half like this because they'll just come out symmetrical anyway and we don't need to make any markings. You can actually even just turn one of the pieces upside down and that way they fit together even more closely. But I won't do that because this is a beginning video. Anywho, make sure um, if you have the, um, the grain line on your pattern, this one doesn't because we just made it ourselves, but most patterns have it. Make sure that it's going in the right direction like this. Place it here, make sure that it's the fabric is nice and flat underneath. Then take your pins and just start pinning it in place. Once you've got your pattern pieces pinned on properly, just cut out around the edges of the pattern. So now we've got our two pattern pieces cut out. The one problem when we use solid colored fabric is that the um, right and wrong sides look basically the same most of the cases. So what I suggest doing before you um, unpin your pattern completely is simply take off a little bit of the top corner of your pattern and just make a little mark. This is the wrong side. Just make it at the very top. Nobody will ever see this because um, this will be folded over in the hemline and in any case it's on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm making one mark here and the other mark here and that way I won't get them confused um, the front and the back or rather the right side and the wrong side. Do this with your front piece as well and then we'll continue. After you've marked the right and wrong sides of the fabric you can start unpinning the back piece. Remove the pattern piece. And there we've got our fabric. These are our, this is the wrong side, this is the wrong side. So what we're going to do is take this top one here and we're going to put it right next to the other one, like this, so that we have the right sides facing up. And put them so that the sides aren't next to each other. I know you can't see over here, but it's here, believe me. <laughs> Remove all the pins from the front piece now. When you remove the pattern piece, you'll have the wrong side up. So, let's take this first top layer, which is wrong side up. This is the front piece, remember? And we're going to put it, without moving it, we're gonna keep the wrong side up. Notice there's this little mark. And put it on top of this one here. So we're going to match up this side seam here. Okay, notice we have wrong side in the corner here and wrong side in the corner here. So we want right sides facing. Now this one, this other piece now is right side up because the wrong side is here on the bottom. So we're going to flip it over and put it right on here. And again, we're going to match up these edges here and pin all the way down. Okay, now we've got our pins all down the two sides here. So what we now need to do is sew straight down. My pattern I drafted with a one centimeter seam allowance and so I'm going to sew with this one centimeter seam allowance. Make sure your pattern, um, check to see what seam allowance your pattern calls for. It might be bigger. So just check that and sew straight down. Okay, you can see I've sewn with a one centimeter seam allowance. Um, you would wanna use a thread that matches your fabric. I used a darker thread just so you can see it better in the video. So um, also remember you need to do a bit of back stitching at the very top and at the very bottom just to secure your stitches and make sure that they don't come out. All right, so here you can see we have one of our pant legs. One of the sides is already sewn up. Now we need to do the other side. But notice here that these sides do not match up and this is because this front piece is smaller than the back piece because the back needs space to accommodate your bum, obviously. So to do this, we need to kind of scooch the fabric around a little bit. So let me show you how to do that. So um, here's the front piece and here's the back piece. So all you need to do is just kind of pull it up to the edge here. You can see that this seam gets pulled up like that. Take your pin and pin it in place. If you drafted your own pattern, you'll remember that this is pretty much what it looked like when you were tracing your pants because remember we had this part here where the seam was like this and when we traced it we had to roll it over a little bit to be able to trace it properly. Okay, so the bottom is pretty easy because it's pretty straight. Then we start to get where it starts curving. So just kind of curve your fabric along with 
the rest. So just little by little, join up the side seams. You can use more pins if you want. That'll help you keep everything in place just a little bit at a time. Okay, don't worry. Um, don't worry if this part gets kind of like weird, if it gets kind of wrinkly and everything. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that this part here that you're sewing is nice and flat and that it is lined up pretty well. It doesn't have to be perfect. In any case, um, you will be trimming the edges um, or finishing them off in some way. So just continue your way all the way up to where this um, point is of the crotch. All right, I've worked my way all the way up here. Now you'll notice this doesn't actually match up perfectly. You know, don't worry about it. It's not that much. It's not gonna make a big deal. Just try and line up the bottom part the most and then this, you know, whatever. It's not rocket science. It doesn't have to be perfect. And this is not a perfect pattern piece because I just traced it from my pants. So it might not match up perfectly, but seriously, don't worry about it. So once you've got this um, side all um, pinned up together, you want to do it with the other leg as well. And then again, sew down with your seam allowance. I'm using a one centimeter seam allowance, but again, make sure that you check your pattern to get the right seam allowance. Okay, now that we've sewn both the inside leg and the outside leg seams, we're gonna to wanna to finish off these raw edges. So if you're going to just continue using a regular sewing machine, which is perfectly fine, I suggest you trim down these edges just a little bit so that they're about maybe half a centimeter. And then you're gonna sew along them with a zigzag stitch. This will keep them from fraying in the wash. I'm actually going to use my overlock machine, which I happen to have, and I prefer that just because it's easier because it sews and cuts at the same time. Okay, so I have sewn down both of the sides of my legs. I've finished off the edges. I've used a um, overlock machine, but you can use a zigzag, as I said. Now comes my favorite part, which is putting the two pieces, the two pant legs together, and then it'll start looking like an actual pair of pants. So what you need to do is just take one of the legs, it doesn't matter which one, put your hand right through and pull it right side out. Okay, then Put your hand through, um, actually rather, don't put your hand through, take the bottom of this leg, the one that you have turned right side out, and put it inside this other leg. Okay, just bring it right down to the bottom, okay? And then just kind of scooch this up so it fits up properly. Um, all right, so now what we have are right sides facing. So we have the right side here and the right side here. You need to join up these edges. So I always start here from this center seam. You can see that this mistake that I made with the um, with drafting the pattern, you can see it's on both pieces. So it's fine, it doesn't really, really matter. So match up these, um, the center seam. So if you can see here, I've matched them up. Um, you can kind of feel with your hand where they meet up, see here. Okay, and then what I do is I generally just put one seam over to one side and one to the other. So see here, it's going towards the right, and on the other side, it's going towards the left. And now you need to pin these together. At this center part where there are these two seams, I actually put two. That way I can just kind of um, push down these side seams. Or these, um, actually they're not side seams, they're the inner leg, sorry. Okay, so see how that is there? Let me get a little bit closer up to show you a little better. Okay, so here you can see a little bit better. I have the center seams here are put together. I have two pins here to put them together. Now all you have to do is just work your way up each side of this curve. So just put the edges together, make sure they're, they're matching up and take a pin and pin. Move up a little bit. If you want, you can do it on a flat surface. That'll make it easier. I'm doing it in the air just for the video. So the edges are matched up. Put in another pin. So work your way up both sides of the curve, all the way up this way, and then all the way up on this other side, joining the two sides and pinning them together. Okay, so now we have pinned this entire curve. 
so the edges are nicely matched up here. Now you're going to go over to your sewing machine and once again you're going to sew all along this curve with the same seam allowance. In my case it's one centimeter, but do whatever your pattern instructions tell you to do. I highly suggest if you have a um, free arm on your sewing machine to use that because it's easier to kind of slip this part here that's underneath, underneath the free arm so that way it doesn't get in the way. But even if you don't have a free arm, it's not a problem. You can just sew. So once you've sewn with your seam allowance, do the same thing we did here with these other seams. If you're um, using a, an overlock machine, just go over the edges with the overlock machine, which is what I'll do. Um, you probably don't have an overlock machine. So in that case, just trim the um, seam allowance down a little bit. So maybe halfway, so half a centimeter. And then sew with a zigzag along the edges and this will keep it from fraying. Alright, so I've sewn around my crotch curve. Um, I've also finished off the edges. So now let's pull the inside pant leg out of the one here. Okay, so we'll just go through again, grab it, pull it back out. Okay, and we can see it's starting to look like an actual pair of pants. Hooray! Okay, so we can see we have the front here. This is the back and our two legs. Now let's go on to doing the hem and the waistband. If you have one of these sleeve um, ironing boards, these mini ironing boards, use it because they're really useful for doing the hems. So take the bottom of your pants and just slip them right onto here. And this way you can iron easily without creasing the rest of the fabric. Okay, make sure that your iron is nice and hot. You've got steam on. Okay, steam is ready to go, okay? Now what I first do is I iron down the seams so that they're nice and flat. I said before, I like using this type of a sewing gauge, okay? This is really useful because what you can do is you can put exactly what you want. Now, for this pattern, I drafted it. If you watched my other video, you might remember, I drafted it so that my hem would be first a fold of half a centimeter and then another fold of one and a half centimeters. So the first thing I need to do is half a centimeter. So I'm going to put this gauge up to half a centimeter, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over this bottom edge. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, these are pajama pants. That's why I love pajama pants for a beginner's project because they don't have to be perfect. It really doesn't matter. Even if they come out a little wonky, you're just gonna wear them to bed. Nobody will notice. Okay, so the sewing gauge in theory, you go like this. Um, you slip it underneath and you can see, you push it to the edge here. And then these little um, thingies here, Oops, not that, the little purple one. I don't know if you can see it. It should be at the edge of the fabric there. Or you can just simply put it on top of the fabric, which is what I usually do because I find it easier. It helps press down the, the um, fabric. So you got your half a centimeter or whatever your pattern tells you and press it down. Make sure you press it really nicely. This is um, also why I suggest using woven cotton for your first project because it presses really nicely. Okay, so I usually do one seam and then I do the other seam. Now I go into the center and so this is already pressed over here and it's already pressed over here so I just kind of stretch it out. That way it's already pretty much right. Okay, there we go. Half a centimeter and just press this. So now I've got um, the bottoms here folded over half a centimeter. So now I'm going to do it another fold and this one's going to be one and a half centimeters. So I'm going to put this down to one and a half. There we go. And we're going to fold over again. So fold over, make sure that that first fold doesn't come undone. Okay, get it more or less by eyeball that looks about right, but it's too much, so kind of push it down. Let's see, that's still too much, so in this case it's easier just to stick this sewing gauge in there. There we go, that looks about right. Okay, this is a little bit too much. This one you want to get a little more precise because this is what you're actually going to be seeing. Okay, that looks good, so press it. Use some steam. So when I get this final seam here, or final pressing, I like to put in a pin just to kind of 
keep it in place because um, it can kind of get unfolded. So I just like to do this. Okay, then I go back to this other. Um, See, so you can see here it came a little unfolded. So now I go to the other side seam. Remember, you're doing this from the wrong side of the pants. So here when you fold up, you see the right side, but you wanna have it so that the wrong side is up. Then we wanna finish these parts in the center too. This is usually easier because it's already done on either side. It's a little bit too much, so let's kind of push it down. Okay, and press. So you can see this is why I prefer using this mini um, ironing board because it makes it a lot easier to do the bottoms, to do the hems. Okay, so now I'm all set. So on the right side, you can, can't see anything, but it's nicely folded over. So do this with the other leg as well, and then you're going to sew right down. In this case, you definitely want to use your, the free arm of your sewing machine. You're going to sew really close to this folded edge to just hold it down. Okay, here you can see I've sewn the hem. I've sewn very close to the edge. Again, I wouldn't use a darker thread like this. Normally, it's just to show up in the video. When you turn the pant leg right side out, you can see, there we go, our hem. Doesn't it look nice? Okay, now let's prepare the elastic waistband. Now again, you need to look at the um, measurements that your, your um, pattern tell you. Um, in my case, I drafted mine so that I would first fold over half a centimeter and then two centimeters because I'm using two centimeter elastic. Um, in this case, you can use a regular ironing board. I'm just using this because it's easier because I have it here. But basically, you're going to do the same thing as you did with um, your hems there. So um, go around, first press these seams so that they're nice and flat. Okay, do this with all four of them. Then um, fold over whatever the first amount you have to do is. I mean, remember, you're always doing this from the wrong side of the fabric. So I need to do half a centimeter. So let me put that to half a centimeter. Okay, then um, obviously first do all of your seams. I'm just gonna show you really quickly what you need to do. Okay, then do half, whoops, do your half a centimeter. Okay, this looks about right and press it down. This, when you're using the regular ironing board, you can get more fabric as you go. This one is tiny. Um, I wouldn't normally use this tiny one for the um, waistband just because it doesn't make any sense. I'm just doing it for the video. So press that. So go all around. So first flatten out your seams, then do your first fold over. In my case, it's half a centimeter. Go all around doing that. Then do your second fold. So in, I'm using two centimeter elastic. So I drafted the pattern to be two centimeters. So then you take it everything over, starting at the seams, like you did with the hems, do two centimeters. Now, um, if anything, if you're, you know, not able to do it perfectly, don't make it smaller, otherwise the elastic won't fit through. So if anything, make it a tiny bit bigger than that. And then just press it again. I'm not going to, well, I'll just show you. So press it, okay. And then again, put in your pins. And do that all the way around. Okay, so I folded all my waistband around. I've done first a half centimeter and then two centimeters. This is because I'm using two centimeter elastic. Now when you put your pants down, you can see the part that is lower and the part that is higher. Obviously the part that is higher is the back. So let's go to the back a moment. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to sew around and make a casing, but we need to leave an opening. So what I like to do is actually mark off where I'm going to leave this opening. So let me move this pin over here. And actually I like to use double pins just to make it a little bit more clear that this is where I need to leave the space to insert my elastic afterwards. So now go to your sewing machine and just like you did with your hems, you're going to sew all around very close to the edge, okay? Because you wanna leave that two centimeters or whatever amount you're leaving for your elastic to get through. Okay, and uh, now you can see that I've sewn around just like I did with the hem really close to the edge. 
Um, again, use a color that actually matches. Um, this one, you can see it too dark. It doesn't really look great, but again, I did it so that you can see it better in the video. In here, you can see the part in the back that I left with the space here, okay? So now, let's get our elastic. Use a measuring tape to measure around the waist of your whoever's going to wear your pants. Or if you're using a pattern, you can use whatever they, um, whatever length they say. I'm making these pants for my son, and I measured him, and he is um, 70 centimeters. So then take your elastic. Okay, here's my two centimeter elastic, and measure out to um, whatever the amount is. So oops, mine is all tangled up here. So I measured to 70 centimeters. Now what you're going to do is you're going to want to take a little bit less, so about an inch less or two and a half centimeters less, and cut. Okay, so we've got our pants here with the um, opening in the casing here. Take the end of your elastic, your safety pin, put the safety pin through the end, oops, without pricking yourself, okay? Now we're just going to slip it right through here into the casing and you can feel the safety pin through here. So you scrunch it up, hold the safety pin, and pull the fabric. Go this way all around. Okay, so you can see I've made my way all the way back around. As you go, um, you'll see that it kind of it gathers like this, and that's totally normal. Just make sure that the elastic is flat all the way around, that it's not kind of curved around, because if it does, it'll not feel very good when you're wearing it. So I'm feeling, and it's nice and flat. So pull it all the way out, remove the safety pin. Now we're going to have to join these two ends. Now notice here I made another mark because we're going to have to overlap. So you're going to make a mark, or just do it by eyeball, or just measure it and attach it. Um, but once again, two and a half centimeters, or um, an inch, Make a mark here so that you can overlap them. If you want, you can just sew them, um, the two ends together directly, but what I prefer doing is taking um, littler safety pins and just um, attaching them like this. And that way you can kind of scooch the, um, kind of stretch it out again so that the elastic is kind of inside there and have the person who's going to wear these try these on and just see if it's more or less right. Once um, it's right, you can kind of stretch it back out and you can sew over it and I'll show you in a moment how to do that. Okay, I tested out the pants on my son and they fit him just right. And so what I did is I took out the um, safety pins, I put in regular straight pins just to hold it so I can sew around. And I just sew, sewed a box, a rectangle, and a little cross right through it. And so that way the two ends are very securely put um, together. So now we just need to kind of put it back in there and just kind of pull the elastic so that it scrunches back up. What we're going to do is we're going to continue this um, seam right here, this um, stitching. We're going to flatten this out again and make sure that we're sewing right on the very edge without catching the elastic. There's one extra little thing. Um, I usually put in tags because I have handmade, um, I have my own tags with my logo on them and everything. But um, what I suggest is you take a little piece of ribbon, doesn't really matter what color it is or whatever, fold it in half, and before you sew this part down, just stick this right in. Um, you can pin it in place if you want, okay? And that way it'll be easy, once it's sewn in, to tell which is the front and which is the back. This is particularly useful if you, are, you have a child who's going to wear these. So put in the, um, put the, the ribbon here. Let's pin it just to keep it in place. And whoops, and then just sew the, the rest of this opening closed from here to here. Okay, and here you can see I've sewn right across. The tag is in there, so we know that that's the back. The only thing we need to do now is just kind of adjust the fabric, kind of pull it and pull the fabric. Um, hold on to the elastic and kind of pull the fabric to try and get it so that it's gathered more in the back as well. But even if you don't do that, it'll eventually just get um, adjusted on its own when you wear it. And there you have your brand new pair of pajama pants. And now the moment that you've waited for to try on your brand new pajama pants that you sewed yourself.
They look and feel great. Nice work. Now make sure you head on over to coochiecoochicoo.com to get all sorts of other great sewing tutorials. And don't forget to click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you soon. Thank you.